Hello everybody, Anna Sabremowitz here. Hope you're having a fabulous, a fabulous day. Today is Thursday and I wanted to shoot this live because one of our members had a fabulous question um, and I wanted to dig into it a little bit and basically go back to, you know, my experience with this kind of uh, request and this kind of um, problem. Problem. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity. All right. So uh, one of the questions was from Andlin. And Anlin said, hey, you know, we've got this customer, they've got a product, and the product has a ton of features, and they really want to teach, um, let's say, the people who are selling these products about the features and the, uh, of the product so that they're very comfortable selling it and recommending it to customers. Uh, now, I came upon this issue on myself when I was designing training for Sony. So Sony would release probably, like, I'm thinking, you know, in a software world, in the tech world, every three months, uh, three months is basically a year, right? So every three months, every quarter, there would be tons of new products. And some would um, uh, make it to um, like all the best buys in the world and some would not. But uh, if you worked at, let's say, a best buy, you needed to know the features of the new products because they were updated every three months. So how do you do this, right? And here's some of the things I learned from that experience. That people, yeah. <laughs> People recommend what they know, always. And this happens even like if you go to somebody and say, hey, you know, uh, what's a shoe that you love? You're going to recommend to that person the shoe that you enjoy wearing, the shoe that you found. You're not going to say, oh, I know these brands. You're going to choose the things that you use, choose the things that you know, like, trust, all those things. So uh, you might even recommend other uh, resources that other people have um, recommended to you. So you could say, you know, Susan actually uh, use, wears these shoes and she actually finds them extremely, uh, you know, comfortable. I mean, I'm not, that's not my style, but Susan says she really loves them and I trust Susan. So um, let's say this client, uh, their thing would be, you know, we are trying to release this product and make the people who are selling it very comfortable with its features but we don't want to teach them sales. So we don't think a scenario here is going to be a good fit because we're not actually teaching them how to sell the product. But in essence, they kind of are because what is sales? Sales, as far as I'm concerned, is customer service, right? So let me tell you a story. Person goes into a, uh, a store and they're going on a ski trip. They're going on the ski trip and they're, they walk into the store and they're like, hi, I'm going on a ski trip. Here's my list of stuff that I need. And the person's like, that's wonderful. I can show you all these things. And they go around and the, here's the skis, here's the ski suit, here's the poles, all kinds of stuff, right? And they're like, yeah, my list is ready. This is great. And the salesperson's like, is there anything else you need? And the person's like, well, no, you showed me all the best, most affordable and high quality things. Thank you so much. Best customer service ever. The person leaves. And then they get to the top of the peak in Switzerland. And they're about to, you know, ski down the slopes and they realize they can't because they don't have goggles. The person, let's say, who was selling them all those ski equipment didn't go beyond what was on the list, didn't want to upsell one more thing or sell them things that, that they didn't think they needed. Is that good customer service or bad customer service? Now you could say that's sales, you could say that's customer service. As far as I'm concerned, they're the same thing. You should be able to recommend products based on what the customer needs, even if they don't know they need it, right? But here's the crux of it. How do you know how, what the customer needs and what the customer says, vocalizes that they need, translates into a product that will help them solve the problem, right? They, they always say, you know, when somebody goes into Home Depot, they're not looking for a drill. They're trying to make a hole. And if a drill is the thing that they need, you got to figure that out, right? So you got to figure that out. Like sometimes you don't need a drill. Sometimes all you need is a nail to make the hole first, depending on what the person asks you, what you're trying to accomplish and what your goal is. So that's why I think, 
and I actually know a scenario would work in this situation because what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, hey, we're going to teach you about this product. The way that you're going to be comfortable with the product is by knowing all its features, but you also have to know how to take those features and connect them to a benefit or a result that the client's trying to achieve. And when you have super confidence doing that, then you actually become an even better salesperson. Because the thing is, is the better you understand the product, the better you understand how, the, how that product benefits the customer, the more likely you are to sell it, the more likely you are actually to make a, an effective recommendation in a sale. Therefore, you become more confident. It's kind of like a circle, like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So it's actually in the best interest of manufacturers to create training, scenario-based training for uh, their whoever's selling that product so that they can be very comfortable knowing, hey, this person said this and they're trying to solve this kind of problem. I know something that will help them. This is actually a specific feature of this product that's developed specifically to solve this problem. So that's why scenarios really work. So what we would do um, for this, um, and I just wanted to reinforce that point, the goal is to take customer speak and translate it into the features of a product. And I hope that makes sense uh, because a lot of times, like you can tell a great tech salesperson from a bad tech salesperson. You'll go into some place where somebody's like a super geek, right? And they'll start, you'll like, I need this. And then they'll ask you like, uh, okay, they'll, they'll take you over to like something. And they'll tell you all this like stuff about it that you, you don't really care about at all. They'll tell you the features, like the glazing, the heat uh, resistance, all kinds of stuff. And you're like, I just want a cup. I, actually, I don't want a cup. I just want something to drink out of on my desk that doesn't tip, you know, it doesn't spill. Okay, cool. Well, let me, you want something that you can drink out of, okay, and that doesn't tip. Okay, so that means that you're looking probably for this mug. Why am I recommending this mug? Because the bottom of it is actually faces out so that it doesn't actually tip. So that's, that's a feature of this mug that solves that problem, which is tipping on the desk. Cool, right? So um, for basically every single product that had a neat, uh, a new feature that was issued every three months for these electronics manufacturers, what we would do is we would create questions from a consumer, problems from a consumer, find out what kind of problems those things would be solving. Because a lot of times when you add features, it's because people requested them or they're, um, they're a great time saver or all those things. But you have to actually understand that because I could tell you all these bonus things, even, even if you're, I come in ready to purchase a specific product saying I did my research and all those things, you don't just sell the product, you sell all these other features but you still have to say them in a way that somebody would be able to understand how they benefit them. So not only do you have to translate what that person's saying into going, oh, I have the perfect product for you, boom. Then once they're already kind of in your world and actually on top of it, they could say, but guess what it also does? Not only does it drill a hole, it also aligns everything so you don't make crooked holes. And that's called the calibration engine, but you don't say that. You say, listen, you know, you want to make straight aligned holes. We got that doohickey there. It'll actually help you do that. So that's what I need, right? That's what most customers need. They need to figure out what's in it for me. And so scenarios can help you do that. You can actually create very simple questions. You don't have to get to be super sophisticated, but mostly um, where somebody's describing what they want to do. And then you can kind of simulate how somebody should say that. And that could be a really simple multiple choice question, but as long as it's contextual and uses the language that a customer would use and actually simulates a bit of that conversation about how to discover those problems, that's actually solid. Because not only will it give uh, somebody the idea and the language that they're gonna be using, but also it will um, give them some prompts so that whenever they're in that situation again, like, oh yeah, that's right. They did say that. Okay. So this is how I would kind of go about discovering that. The more you do that, the more you reinforce those good habits, that's a win-win. That's a win-win for everybody. The product, the manufacturer, the customer, the sales rep, all those things kind of come together. So and I hope that that answered your question and you found that useful. 
Now, um, if you guys have any of your own project questions, um, you are welcome to ask me. Um, I usually try to do a live at least uh, a couple of times a week uh, to answer questions from you. Uh, if I can't type it up in the comment, cause sometimes, you know, as you can tell, I just went on for 11 minutes. <laughs> um, just to give you more context around some of these topics. And uh, if you can give me context around what you're trying to achieve, then I can better answer your question. All right. Otherwise, um, we do have just wanted to let you know, uh, I did launch a uh, private community where we get to work on your projects together. Um, and so if you have uh, something that you're working on, you want to join us, it's a monthly membership and you not only get to uh, experience um, coming on so you can ask your questions in live and share your screens if you want and we can actually work through your, your projects together. But the other thing you get to do is to look at walkthroughs of other scenario examples that are out there or are mine and you get to see uh, how I deconstruct them and also uh, some best practices and how to improve them. So as you basically go through, uh, you get this repository of examples that are walked through by me uh, and you get more insight into how to think, how to look at them, what you can steal, what you can borrow, and what are some good practices that you can implement in your very own projects. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Um, if, um, if this is the end of the workday for you, you go and rock the end of your day. Otherwise, rock out and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Okay, take care friends. Also. If you like this video, let me know and then um, I'll make more. All right. Take care. Bye.